What's going on my fellow Jedi and Padawans? Welcome back to another Jedi gaming video. Thank you guys so much for coming back to the channel. And if you guys are new, welcome, welcome. I truly appreciate all that support lately. Y'all have been popping off on the YouTube here. So thank y'all so much. And I hope y'all are having an amazing hump day in this Wednesday here. Now, if y'all are feeling a little sluggish and tired on this hump day, make sure to hit up Dubby Energies for some amazing drinks with multiple different flavors that'll keep you focused and give you energy for the rest of the day without that crash. So hit up Dubby Energy, use code JEDI at checkout for 10% off and get yourself some amazing flavors. Now back to the video here, we are running a Titan Arc 3.0 build for y'all with the new exotic arms in the point contact cannon braces that pair perfectly with our new melee thunderclap. We're also going to be going over a hunter build later once the chest piece gets re-enabled with that gyro falcon chest piece. So moving on, as always, we're doing our abilities, aspects, and fragments first for our striker subclass. So we're going to be running the Fist of Havoc Super with our Towering Barricade and Strafe Lift. Now important to throw on Thunderclap as the whole build revolves around this right here with that crazy charge up and being able to one shot a lot of enemies inside of the game minus some bosses that have huge health pools but with just one punch of this that is fully charged up we're doing about 100k without doing some crazy tractor cannon one two punch stacking five or six different things together to get a 500 K melee. This is just normal with collecting one arc elemental well. Now we're using storm grenades to pair with this for that extra pop on titans especially because of touch of thunder aspect. So our storm grenades after detonating create a roaming thunder crowd that tracks nearby targets firing those bolts of lightning so it's very good at sustained DPS as well as tracking some of those extra adds and clearing everything out in a arena. Next off, we have Knockout, so our punch when critically wounded or breaking a target's shield. It infuses your melee attack with increasing range and damage for a short period of time. Defeating targets with these melee attacks starts health regeneration and makes us amplify. For our fragments that we're going to be using, we're going to be using Spark of Magnitude for that Storm Grenade, which just has it have that lingering effect even longer, allowing us to clear more heads and do additional DPI on some of those thick champions and bosses inside of the PvE realm. Next off, we have Spark of Feedback. So when we do get this to proc, taking that melee damage briefly increases our outgoing melee damage, and it gives us 10 resilience. That little outgoing damage bumps it up to about 150k that we can do with this melee, but it is a little hard to get this to proc at most times. On the other side, we're going with Spark of Beacon, so when we're amplified, our arc special weapons create blinding explosions. So this is going to pair well with that delicate tomb exotic fusion rifle that I've been running in a couple of my builds here because I think it is very S tier for that arc 3.0 synergy. Last but not least, we are using Spark of Resistance, so when we are surrounded by combatants, we are more resistant to incoming damage. This just allows us to get up close and personal with this melee and hopefully get Spark of Feedback to proc a little bit more than normal by just spanning back and letting damage come to you instead of getting up in there with the Titan build as Titans do and just punch everything out. Now onto our weapons here for this Titan build, very similar to our last build with the Warlock Exotic Helmet that is new this season in the Fallen Sunstar. So using a Submission SMG with Subsistence and Demolitionist, allowing to get back our Storm Grenade even faster. And then the Delicate Tomb, like I said, which helps us create Ionic Traces intrinsically, as well as creating that blinding effect via our Aspect and Fragment that we have on to make us amplified and then the fragment to have that blinding effect on arc special weapon final blows. Those ionic traces that we collect will also overcharge this weapon, allowing us to jolt some of those stronger combatants 
and just intrinsically keep getting back that overcharge and creating more ionic traces. And finally, we're gonna be using our Storm Tracer with auto loading holster and adaptive munitions. So we can take this in and break some additional shields that aren't arc with the adaptive munitions. And then that auto loading for DPS, this thing is still pretty high damage, even though we don't have firing line or Vorpal on this weapon here. Moving on to our armor pieces and our mods. We got Harmonic Siphon, so both our Storm Chaser as well as our Delicate Tomb Fusion have the chance to create those orbs of power on those final defeats in rapid succession. And then we're gonna have Melee Wellmaker, so when we get that charge up in our Thunderclap and let it release, we're gonna get those arc final blows, creating arc elemental wells. Now the exotic gauntlet that this build is focused around is the point contact cannon brace. Now that is a handful to say, but they are very, very fun to use in my opinion and pair well with our new thunderclap melee. Now the exotic armor perk, we have hammer of the gods defeating targets with our thunderclap melee restores melee energy targets near you when you use your thunderclap suffer lightning strikes so it's very good at creating that aoe effect around you wiping out even more additional enemies which is very good with the chaining and this build like i said playing into titan being up close and personal just punching everything out when we are amplified that lightning strike has an increased range so just a little higher aoe of doing damage on enemies now for our mods that we have on this bad boy, we're going to be using Bountiful Wells, which allows us to stack multiple copies of that melee well maker that we had on our helmet. And on top of that, again, we're using two focusing strikes, which grant us class ability energy when causing damage with our melee. So we're going to be able to protect ourselves in that higher end game activities with our shield more often in 100 resilience. And when we do damage with our melee, since we're gonna getting it back very, very quickly, almost instantly with this build. Next off on our chess piece right here, we're gonna be running damage melee resistance so we can get that spark of feedback to proc by being up there and in close and personal with a lot of our enemies. This just again helps us stay alive, taking less damage from those melees. This is gonna be our second stack of melee well maker. So when we get those defeats with our powered melee, we're gonna get those arc elemental wells to spawn, stacking that with our helmet. And I do believe our boots right here has our third one on, which again is just gonna allow us to create about three or four of those arc elemental wells on a powered melee defeat instead of only one like normal if you have on just one melee well maker. Now, last but not least, we have our class item with Well of Ions, which when we collect those Arc Elemental Wells that we're creating via our melee, it's gonna give our next melee attack additional output. So this is where our damage increase comes from, stacking that all the way up to 100K for just a basic melee with just collecting that Arc Elemental Well, getting Well of Ions to proc. Now we're gonna have two outreach on this as well. So it reduces our melee cooldown when using our class ability. So it just pairs perfectly with the focusing strike that we have on our arms. So when we do melee damage, we get our ability back faster. And when we throw down our ability, we get our melee back. So it's just a perfect positive feedback loop. Love, love that part of the build. As you can see, we're just wiping out enemies easily easily with this charged melee you don't even have to stack it all the way up to a hundred percent on a lot of these rank and file red bar enemies if you're taking it into some of that harder end game activity where you're a little under leveled and under light you will have to charge it up all the way to get that defeat but being able to do that and get that clap as well as getting our energy back because of our exotic gauntlets here and creating arc elemental wells, which again, when we collect them, give us our melee energy back, which it's basically already back after we get a defeat because of our exotic gauntlets. But those arc elemental wells give us melee damage on top of it. So like I said, a perfect feedback loop of creating arc elemental wells to do more damage on our melee, which will in turn give us more arc elemental wells. So 
I love, love the way that this is set up for exotic gauntlets, especially this season, pairing it with our new arc 3.0 changes here. On the flip side, there is the addition of using insurmountable skull for it instead of point contact cannon brace because we do get our melee back as well from insurmountable skull for it, but we don't get those additional effects of creating that AOE effect and that lightning strike near us, creating that more of an ad clear build instead of having your melee back instantly. You still get it back pretty much all the way full with the defeats on the melee and collecting our arc elemental wells so there isn't much of a difference on how many times we can use the melee but it is a big difference for these point contact cannons to create that aoe effect doing a little bit more ad clear potential than our insurmountable skull fort especially with our thunderclap melee here so hopefully my titans out there can give this a try. Let me know how you guys like it in this new exotic arms instead of using insurmountable skull for it. Definitely, it's a flip of a coin for me. They both do very similar things, but if I'm going for more of that AoE damage and clearing out enemies, definitely throwing on the new exotic gauntlets here and point contact cannon. If I'm using one of the other melees in ballistic slam or shoulder charge with the insurmountable skull for it. But these are super great for our thunderclap melee. So y'all gotta let me know what you think of this build and in general the exotic gauntlets we got this season. Very, very fun in my opinion. Definitely a variety of builds this season. And now that all of our supers are in the 3.0 state, the builds are just running crazy. Lots of different ways you can make out a lot of these builds. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Truly appreciate that support. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.